and welcome to the Cloud Developer Channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use an Azure storage account for backups. Now, specifically, what we're going to be focusing on is using the Azure Blob Storage service offering in order to be able to store files and different pieces of content such as images and videos and log files. And you can use it uh, for your day-to-day -day operations and backup as well. It's a very robust solution. It gives you the ability to manage it through many different languages and technologies such as .NET, Java, Node.js, Python, Go, PHP, and Ruby. And it also has a REST API in order to actually be able to support all those operations. Uh, there is a documentation website that you can find on docs.microsoft.com that is uh, on my screen right now where you can get a lot more detail. And specifically, I'm going to show you how to use two pieces of software that um, are available. And then there's many more other one options available as well. But the two specific I'm going to focus on are, are going to be AZ Copy and ArcLone. AZ Copy is a solution that's been created by Microsoft themselves and maintained by them as well. And uh, there's another piece of software called ArcLone, which is an open source solution. And the nice thing about this solution is it not only provides the ability to um, manage the content inside of Azure file storage or Azure account, uh, storage account, it also allows you to uh, connect to many other cloud providers and also use it for local uh, file copying operations. And it has many other features that are very um, useful. So uh, in order to actually get these two tools installed, I'm going to show you how I did it on my computer. And specifically, I was using the Chocolatey Package Manager for Windows. And um, let me show you how to get that done so we can quickly go ahead and run through the process of installing both of those tools. So you can go to chocolatey.org and on the homepage, you'll see the Get Started page. Once you click on that, you'll notice that it will take you to this uh, page of the installation method. And under the individual tab, you'll see that there is a command uh, that you can run. So the, the thing you need to do is basically just uh, copy this to clipboard. And I'm doing this on Windows, so the command itself is going to be leveraging PowerShell. And I already have a PowerShell prompt open as an administrator. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just uh, simply paste that command and go ahead and run that. Now, because I already have Chocolatey installed, it's going to basically do some quick checks and make sure everything is up to date. And because I do have it installed, the process completes pretty quickly. So uh, the recommendation is once you actually do it for the first time, if you never had it installed, is to restart your PowerShell window. But uh, I don't need to do that since I already had it installed. So. And the way I can check the version number is I can simply type in Chaco dash dash version and it's going to tell me that I have version 10.15 installed already. So once we have this installed, what we can do is go ahead and actually install the AZ copy application itself and then our clone application. And if you're looking for different packages that you can install using Chocolatey, when you go to their page, whether you're on a home page or that instruction page, there's uh, this little uh, looking glass icon. So you can go ahead and click on that and we'll start with AZ copy. So I'll go ahead and put that in and then do a quick search. So the important thing to note here is there's two different versions. One of the versions is 8.1.10 at the time of uh, 8.1.0 at the time of the recording. And the other one is AZ copy 10.6.0. Uh, 10 the one I'm going to be using is the latest version, which is 10.0, since uh, it's the newer version. It has newer uh, capabilities. So to get the command itself, um, you want to click on that package and then just simply grab this command right here, Chaco install easy copy, and go to your command prompt. And then I'll go ahead and uh, paste that command here and go ahead and uh, run the install. Now, again, because I already had this installed, it basically double checked and made sure that I had the latest version and everything is good to go. And we'll do the same thing for our clone. I'm going to go ahead and search for our clone. And in here, uh, there's a few different versions that are available. Now, um, specifically, uh, what I'm going to be looking at is the installation of our clone itself. 
Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and pick the first one as it looks like the first two are actually um, almost identical. And in fact, one of the things that you'll see is it says Chaco install our clone and the other one is portable. And so I'm going to go ahead and choose the, the first one. I'll copy it from here and go back to the command prompt. Go ahead and uh, paste that in here and go ahead and run the install command. Now, it already uh, sees that it's installed and it goes ahead, goes ahead and skips that installation process. So the, the way you can check uh, to make sure that you have the right versions installed is by typing in easy copy version. And then here you'll see that it has version 10.6 and then uh, our clone version. And then you'll see that I have version 152.2. So everything is good to go. And we're ready to jump into the configuration or the creation of the actual Azure storage account at this point. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I already have my Azure portal open. And one of the first steps that you should take uh, when you actually set up your subscription in Azure is to configure a new resource group, unless you already have one where you want to place that new storage account. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new resource group for the purposes of this particular video. And I'll just call it Cloud Developer Storage Account US. So, and I'll go ahead and uh, set the region as East US. And then I'll go ahead and review and create and click on the screen button. So as soon as I did that, uh, it was pretty quick in creating the resource group and you can see it right here. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And then from here, what I can do is I'll go ahead and click on the add icon and then I'll type in storage account and I uh, choose that as an option and then go ahead and click on create. And from this particular screen, uh, I have a few different options that are going to be important. One is I need to choose a unique name uh, for my storage account. So I'll call it Cloud Developer Storage 01. And you'll notice that uh, if a name already exists, not just within your subscription, but across the particular region, um, it will actually notice that that uh, account already exists and it will not allow you to create it. So you have to sometimes pick uh, names that you might not necessarily like but because they're already taken you have to choose a different name so and in this case i'm going to go ahead and choose east us since that's the region where i created my resource group although you can create it in other re in other regions as well if you wanted to and then from an option perspective since i'm using it for backups i'm not going to go ahead and choose the premium as it's going to cost more and you'll be able to actually get more information if you're interested about uh, the different options and um, performance aspects that you're going to get if you actually click on premium, if you uh, click on this I, um, icon here and click on learn more about the performance. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose the storage V2 as a latest version of the storage account for general purpose. And because one, I'm doing this for demo purposes, but also two, I really don't care about having a read access and replication to another region. I'm just going to go ahead and choose locally redundant storage here. And another important aspect you have to decide for yourself is whether you want uh, this access um, to be cool or hot. And what that really means is, you know, how much uh, data access you're actually going to require on the storage account. So for example, if you're using it just for files and backups, you really don't need a hot uh, type of access tier because it's going to cost you more, but also you, since you're not going to be really using this file system as much since you're using it for backup school is going to be more than enough. And there's also another tier that's available, but it's not uh, an option here at the storage account level. It's actually available as a, at the container level. I'll show you that. Uh, but it's actually even cheaper than both of these options here or either one of these options. So once I chose these options, I'm going to go to networking. And because I do want to connect to it from my home system and I want to be able to upload files directly to the storage account, I'm not going to lock it down. I'm going to make it publicly available uh, through a public endpoint. And I'm going to keep the routing preference to the default option, which is the Microsoft network. And then on the data protection side, 
one of the things that you can choose here is the self delete for blobs. What that allows you to do is be able to actually recover files or blobs uh, if you delete them. So instead of actually fully deleting them, it's going to mark them as deleted so they're not necessarily available for your browsing, but then you can click on the recover option to be able to restore those files. So, and then you have a choice of how many days to actually keep that deleted blob uh, in days. There's also another option for self delete for file shares, which is another type of storage medium that you can have besides blobs, which we're not going to be using. And then you can also do uh, versioning. Um, and basically it allows you to maintain previous versions of your blobs if you wanted to restore them, which we're not going to be going through today. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on next. And under this screen, uh, what you want to be careful about is uh, the way you configure your security options. So you always want to make sure you have sec secure transfer required. Allow uh, blob public access. You want to, that, to have that be enabled in this particular case because I'm accessing it from my home computer to the uh, public storage uh, account. I do want to have this enabled. If I disable it, basically I will only be able to access that storage account through a secure mechanism. And you can get more details about uh, how you actually uh, can, can use this option. Uh, specifically, do you want to have uh, public access or private access uh, through permissions on, on your machine. So, um, sorry, not on your machine, within the configuration of your blob uh, storage account themselves through um, the ACL or access control list. And then for minimum TLS version, you do want to make sure it's set to version 1.2. And then uh, the rest of the options I'm going to keep uh, defaulted to whatever they were um, because we're not going to be using those features for the purposes of the video. So I'll go ahead and click on tags. Here I'm not going to attach any tags, but tags are useful if you know that your different storage accounts are going to be used for different purposes. You can always uh, create a tag and give it a value so you know uh, what kind of uh, files you're storing or if you want to tie it to billing or any other things that you want to actually report on. So I'll go ahead and click on Review, and then once the validation passes, I'm going to go ahead and hit Create. So as this is actually creating, uh, what I'm going to show you real quick is another account that I already had created, just to give you a sense of how much it costs at the time of the recording of this video. I have stored roughly 194 gigabytes of uh, file content in this particular uh, backup video account. And I actually have videos, pictures, files, and documents, and all of them are in what is called a container. Uh, each one of them have different containers. And for example, videos, I actually store my YouTube videos here uh, as backup content. And um, is the, com the combined uh, sum of all of these files is actually 194 gigabytes. Now, the monthly cost for these files uh, for specifically for this particular storage account for me is one dollar and ninety three cents uh, for the month of august which is uh, pretty cheap well you know if you compare it to many other uh, service providers out there so i just want to give you an idea of what it might actually cost to have a storage account with uh, that much content so at this point the the new storage account has been created. I'm going to go ahead and click on go to resource. And as you can see, my storage account got created right here. And there's a couple of ways to actually be able to access this account. One is you can click on containers, which is for blob storage. And then you can see I have no containers here. And I can click on uh, the plus sign and give it a name and uh, specify either public access or private access. Um, and another option is if you can click on the storage explorer preview here, you can actually see the blob container as well. And you can right click and say create a blob container and it'll give you to the same screen. Uh, those are a couple of different options that you can choose. But what I'm going to show you is how to actually use the two tools that uh, we installed on, our, on my computer in order to do the same thing. So we're going to go ahead and create uh, two different containers and we're going to upload some content and then uh, later delete the content just to kind of show you the full cycle. So 
And I'm going to go ahead and open up my command prompt. And in here, I'm going to go ahead and clear that. And uh, we're going to go ahead and use uh, ArcLone as our first tool for this purpose. Now, uh, in order to use ArcLone, you have to actually either configure it or constantly give it uh, arguments to point you to the particular storage account with the particular uh, SAS token or a key if you wanted to use a key for this purpose. But there's another way to do it, which is using the configuration option or a portion of ArcLone, which I'm going to actually use here to kind of simplify the flow. So, and the way to do that is you can type in ArcLone. And then if you press enter, it basically shows you all kinds of commands that are available. Specifically, the one we're going to be looking at is this config command. And if I go ahead and run our colon config, it will prompt me um, for a uh, setup of a new remote or quitting config or setting a password for the configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and hit N for new config. It's going to ask me for the name and I'm going to give it Azure 01. And once I press enter, it's going to list all different types of uh, storage providers that it actually supports. So everything from Backblaze to Azure to Google Drive to OneCloud uh, to OneDrive from uh, Microsoft as well. And I'm going to go ahead and use number 22, which is Microsoft Azure Blob Storage. So press, put in 22, press enter. And in here, what you can do is you can either specify the account name or um, another way to do this, as you can see right here, if you leave it blank, to use a SAS URL or a local emulator. So uh, what I'm going to do is actually use a, a SAS URL since uh, it's a little bit easier to actually just copy and paste that. And in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and press enter to uh, provide a blank. And then it's asking me for a storage account key. Now the storage account key is something that is available for each storage account and uh, when you create one and you you are setting up this configuration in our clone and you give it an account name uh, you can then specify the access key which can be found on this access keys. Now this access key is actually an administrative account that you really don't want to be using for most of your operations. For simplicity purposes, a lot of people do use this, but it basically gives uh, the individual who has access to both of these keys administrative level permissions, which then can basically go ahead and delete your content. Um, and it can be pretty dangerous if that's uh, important information that you're storing here. So uh, another way to do that would be is to go to the shared access signature. And this is where you can really control uh, the mechanism of being able to access and uh, maintain this particular storage account. So in my particular case, I'm going to be only caring about the blob service. So I'm going to go ahead and check all of these other options. And I'm going to allow access to the service, container, and object types. And then I'm going to go ahead and give it uh, all the permissions that are available for that particular service and then give it the, the ability to enable deletions of different versions. Now, if you wanted to prevent people from being able to delete content, you can go ahead and do that here, uh, or to write content and just uh, give them the ability to, to read and add or create. And then you can also control the timing aspect of uh, when they can do that between. So in my, my particular case, since this is just a, a quick demo, uh, I'm going to keep these options uh, to the default. And then I'll go ahead and keep the allowed protocol as well as preferred routing to the default uh, settings. So once uh, that is all selected, I'm going to go ahead and click generate. And it's going to create me this uh, connection string, a SAS token, and a blob service SAS URL, which is what we're going to be using in our case. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy this to clipboard and go back here and right now since it's asking me for a key i'm going to go ahead and press uh, enter since we're not using the key but we are using a SAS url so i'm going to go ahead and paste that here press enter and um, for the default option of false for use emulator i'm going to go ahead and just press enter and then the next option is if i wanted to uh, go to the advanced uh, configuration and i'm going to go ahead and press enter as the default is going to be no and then uh, yes we do want to add this configuration and press enter which is default for yes 
And at this point, you can see right here that the current remotes now have this name Azure 01. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, quit by uh, pressing uh, Q and pressing Enter. And then from this point on, I can actually use the Archon command and just reference this name right here. And I don't have to worry about specifying any other parameters. So one of the things that we can do here is we can actually type in our clone um, LSD uh, for a listing of directories. And the next uh, portion of the parameters, I need to specify which uh, storage that I or the remote that I want to actually iterate around or against. Now, the important thing to note is uh, you need to specify not just the name, but also make sure you have a colon. And it's, uh, it's just the way that our clone is set up to work. And uh, you'll see in a second why that's actually important. So since I have no directories here, it basically shows an empty output. And then what we want to do now is we want to use our clone um, and be able to actually make a, a directory here or specifically a container. So there's a command here called mkdir. And then if it doesn't already exist, uh, it will actually go ahead and create it. So we're going to do our clone mkdir. And then we're going to say Azure 01. And then we're going to call it test1. So this is why it's important to actually specify the colon as it's a delimiter for your actual uh, container you're going to be creating. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter. And um, if I rerun the LSD command, you'll actually notice that now I have a, a test1 uh, container created. So I'm, I'm going to go to my storage explorer and expand the blob containers. And you'll see now I have test one. Now, um, this uh, particular container is actually empty. And what I want to do is I want to actually put the contents of my folder um, that is uh, located in my D drive and under projects. I just have a, a sample project that I have been playing with called port test. And it has about 67 files in it. Um, they're pretty small. Um, it's about 5.67 megabytes in size, so it's nothing big. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just go ahead and upload this entire folder over recursively into that Azure storage account, specifically into that test one container. And the way to do that would be to run our clone sync. And then I'm going to specify the local folder that I want to copy from, which is D drive projects. And since I want the entire folder uh, to be uploaded, I'm just going to put in uh, projects and then backwards slash space and then specify Azure 01 colon and then test one, which is the folder. Now, the next set of parameters that are important uh, is going to be dash capital P for showing progress. You can also do dash dash progress. And then another command that is very handy is dash dash transfers. And this actually allows you to uh, perform multiple parallel file transfers here. So I'm going to go ahead and specify four and uh, press enter. And it's going to go ahead and start uploading the files and show you the progress as it's gone through. So as you can see, it took about 3.4 seconds, which is pretty quick. And I'm going to go ahead and go ahead here into my test one and click on more and hit refresh and you'll see that my port test actually completed so it's pretty quick now the wonderful thing about this tool is if i actually go ahead and try to do this again um, you'll notice that it basically didn't do anything because it didn't detect any changes in the files so and uh, one of the ways i can actually uh, validate that it does work is i'll just put a test file here and i'll put in test go ahead and close that and then I'll just rerun the command again, and you'll notice that it actually uploaded one file. So if I go to this uh, folder here and hit refresh, you'll see that the file actually showed up as well. So now if I update the file, I can also uh, make sure that the file gets updated in Azure. So I'll go ahead and uh, put some content there and rerun the command. And you'll see that because the file was changed, um, the actual content of this uh, folder got refreshed as well. So everything is working as expected. Now, another thing that I can do is I can go ahead and delete this file from here and go back to my command prompt and go ahead and run the command as well. 
and you can see that I actually deleted a file since it's performing a sync operation. Now, you, you do want to uh, make sure that you're using the appropriate commands here, and there are many different options that are available, but in a particular case of syncing files into the cloud, you want to uh, use the sync. Um, there's also a copy and copy to commands that are available. Uh, and delete commands as well. So in this particular case, uh, we're ready to go ahead and delete the the content. And uh, the way you can do that is uh, through the usage of the remove command. And the nice thing about this command is it actually will recursively remove all of the content for you. So I'm going to go ahead and run uh, our clone remove, and then I'm going to specify Azure zero one test one. And in here. You can actually see so in here actually I'm going to be using a purge command and the purge command is going to actually remove the content of that folder so and once I do that uh, it's going to go ahead and actually remove the content and as you can see it actually marked it uh, as deleted now and you can't see it so I'm going to go ahead and refresh the screen here and uh, go ahead and expand it and that particular uh, folder is actually gone so or this particular container is gone so the next thing that I'm going to show you is how to do basically the same thing but using the az copy command now the az copy command is quite a bit different and uh, the options that are available are uh, quite a bit more limited and more specific to Azure storage account. So uh, the two particular commands that we're going to be using here are going to be actually the three commands. One is going to be make for creating a container, then uh, a sync that's going to actually sync the content from local uh, folder to the Azure storage account and then remove in order to delete the contents of the particular container. So let's go ahead and uh, use the AZ make command first. And one of the major differences of AZ copy is the fact that you have to actually provide it um, all URLs, including the authentication. So uh, you can't really be storing the configuration like you could with our clone, which makes it a little bit more challenging to use this tool for these operations. So I'm going to go ahead and generate a new um, SAS token URL here. And then here we're going to be using this particular SAS token uh, option in combination with this blob endpoint uh, endpoint itself, which uh, we'll just copy out of here. And what we're going to do is we're going to say easy copy. And um, let's actually review the documentation real quick. So we're going to say easy copy make. We're going to paste the URL of the actual storage account. And then here, what we're going to specify is the container that we want to create. And that's important because that container doesn't exist yet, but we're basically using easy copy to tell it to go ahead and create the container. And the next uh, step is going to be to grab the actual SAS token right here. I'm going to go ahead and click copy, go to command prompt and paste that right here. And another important thing is you do want to make sure that this is in between the quotes. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And then I'll go ahead and press enter. And as you can see, it actually successfully created. So let's go ahead back to the storage explorer and expand it. And you'll see that uh, the test to container got created. So the next step would be is to actually go ahead and uh, perform a sync operation. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to say AZ copy sync. And let's actually open this, uh, this documentation up. And there's a few examples that uh, they'll show you. Uh, basically, what you want to do is you want to provide the local path to upload and then the same URL that we actually specified during the creation and you do want to specify this dash dash put dash md5 which basically also stores the md5 hash uh, for the file contents and add that to um, the actual property of the file in Azure which is really handy to have. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, copy this last argument here. And I'm going to specify the drive projects. And then at the end, I'm going to put that uh, put MD5 command here. So I'll go ahead, press enter. And uh, as you can see, it actually started uploading. Now, you also notice that it didn't really give you options in terms of how many transfers you can do in parallel. Um, and uh, so this, this tool is, uh, I guess, a lot more um, specific to Azure. Um, it does have options in order to be able to cap the, the speed that uh, you want to actually upload at, but it doesn't give you the ability to control how many operations you can run in parallel. Our clone also does provide the ability to cap the speed. And it has many other options that are available on their website to, in their documentation. So in this particular case, the content got uploaded. So let's take a quick look. I'm going to go ahead and click on test two and click on more and refresh. And you'll see that the same uh, files are actually uploaded right here. So let's do a quick test um, as well here. And I'll show you a quick difference between the two tools. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new file here and put test go ahead and close it. And then I'll go ahead and run the same sync operation again. And it will notice that the file is actually uh, new and go ahead, goes ahead and actually uh, creates that file and uploads it into Azure. Now, what happens when we actually delete this file right here and uh, rerun the command? So it's going to go ahead and scan, but notice that it actually noticed the scans at the source, the file scanned at the source is 67 and in the cloud is actually 68 but it didn't actually do anything and one of the reasons for that is because by default it will not actually remove files that have been removed from a local file system and you can control that option uh, through a different parameter here and one of those um, is the delete destination so you want to actually go ahead and uh, set this permission if you want to uh, delete that uh, file content uh, in the destination. So I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, well, let me keep this uh, put MD5 here. I'll just add the delete destination parameter. Um, and you want to specify true. And as you can see, that uh, the number of deletions at the destination are set to one now. And uh, if I actually go ahead and refresh this folder, um, that file is actually not here anymore. So, so that's uh, one of the bigger differences between the way that these two tools work. Now, another um, step that we want to do here is we want to go ahead and remove the content of that folder and specifically the, the actual container as well. So let's go ahead and try that. And the command to use here would be remove. And we'll go ahead and uh, just leave the, the URL. And then I'll go ahead and press enter here. And um, as you can see that the number of files transferred and basically all the other uh, statistics are set to zero. And uh, let's take a quick look to see what actually happened. So as you can see, nothing actually happened. And one of the reasons why that is is because it uh, does not by default actually do a recursive operation, meaning that because this root level folder didn't have any files in it, it uh, only has a folder, it basically skipped going into the subfolders and removing the content. So if we want to actually do that, we're going to have to uh, add another parameter, uh, which is dash dash recursive. And it's detecting that it needs to delete 67 files. And it went ahead and actually did that. So let's take a quick look. But one of the things you'll notice is that uh, the purge command on the Archelon tool actually deleted the container. The AZ copy tool itself does not support the ability to actually remove containers. It only supports the ability to create the containers. And in order to do this operation uh, using uh, Azure CLI essentially, um, or a REST API, or you can actually go to the Azure portal and actually right click and just delete it from here. So, which is what I'm going to do here. Now, 
Another interesting uh, aspect of the tools uh, is the fact that Arcalone will actually allow you to go ahead and um, retry operations that are failing based on known um, workings of Azure. So for example, if you're actually deleting a container and that container disappears from your portal, but it doesn't disappear immediately from a backend, and if you actually try to use the easy copy operation to try to create another one of these uh, containers, it's going to actually just give you an error saying that the container has been deleted and you have to wait. Our clone will not do that. It will actually wait and retry a few different times until it actually succeeds, which is a really useful benefit for scripting capability. So uh, that's another benefit of using something like our clone, which is also cross-platform and it allows you to uh, use uh, the scripting ability uh, in order to be able to automate a lot of your processes. So these are some of the very basic uh, high level summary of what you can do and uh, how to actually back up your files into Azure storage account, which I find very useful and I use it personally and I, I do enjoy this feature uh, pretty much because I don't have to worry about having to store this uh, content on my local computer anywhere and in case of uh, you know, an emergency if I need to recover these files I can quickly go into my Azure Cloud account and actually recover them to any destination um, you know at any point in time so um, that's what I wanted to show you um, and so if you have any questions go ahead and leave them in the comment section below and I will do my best to respond to any of them in a timely matter. Other than that, have a great day.